Hello my friends and welcome back to the channel. This is Noah and I want to talk briefly about a really cool feature of Rayanne that I didn't know existed until relatively recently. Somebody showed me this. It's freaking awesome. It's going to save you a bunch of time and you can access it through the free account. Okay, so some. I also want to tell you about something I found out with the pricing recently. Okay, so if we go to the pricing tab, I always thought that they only had the yearly. That's all I ever really looked at. So you can see if you're a student, it's 60 bucks a year. It's a pretty good deal, I think, for what you get if you if you want to use some of the more advanced features of RAN. But the other thing that I didn't know is that they also offer a quarterly plan. I didn't know that they had this quarterly option. I think that's a great option for people who are just going to use it for a shorter period of time. So I wanted to point out that real quick because I didn't, I didn't know that. Uh, but let's talk about this new feature that I found out about, okay? It's not necessarily a new feature overall in Rayanne. It's just something I had no idea was there. So let's check this out. I already got logged in. So I'm going to show you on the main page. I'm going to go into one of my reviews. This so this is just some example data that I dumped in here a while ago. There's like 37 references in here, whatever. It's it's fine. So one of the really common things that we run into in meta-analysis or systematic review is we need to have more than one screener review studies, right? So oftentimes we have at least a second screener for a subsample. So how do we create that sample? Well, if you're doing it in Excel, you can go and just select whatever. If you're doing it here, you can select a few things, but then it's not random and it's kind of time consuming, right? I mean, if you are if you are trying to do it randomly, then like, let's say you're using something with Excel, you gotta put in a little code or a formula and then have it pull all the stuff. It's, it's kind of a pain. I just learned you can do this so easily in RAN, okay? So check out what we do. I'm on my review tab here, right? So uh, review data, it's showing all my references right now. You can see there's 37 of them. Up here in the top right, there's this button called samples. Again, I had no idea this was here, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click samples. And once I'm here, you can see it says choose your sample data source. So I'm going to go with all references right now because I don't have any filters on. Uh, so how do I want it to actually sample? There are options. You can go by a number of different things, but I'm going to go by randomize because I want a random sample. I'm going to call this, um, hmm, I'm going to say Paul. So what percent of the sample do I want them to look at? I'm going to say 50. So in theory, this should pull up about over here in the right hand column we should see what like uh 17 18 studies something like that so we'll say 50 percent okay so it's gonna say 19 studies so yeah because noah can't count right so yeah 19 would be about half not 17. so i'm gonna say my hypothetical friend paul is going to review 50 percent of my sample it's gonna be 19. i'm gonna hit create okay so i went ahead and i did that so what do we see well here we don't necessarily see anything different until we scroll down to this sample data. And then here we can see Paul, right? So if I go into screening now, again, I can go ahead over here on this right side and I can find the one that says samples. I just got to scroll down to it here and I'm gonna choose only Paul's sample. And look, now there are 19. Okay, so you're probably wondering why does it say 16 out of 37 right now? So if we look at the currently active filters, because we, want we wanted it to be 19, right? Because 19 would have been Paul's sample. So what we can do is when we look at what's actually being filtered, it's saying it's undecided and sample data. Well, this is a problem because you don't know this about this data set, but I had already made some decisions. Okay, so like I had already made some decisions in this data set. So I'm just gonna change undecided to all articles. And now you can see this updated all articles and sampled data, which is Paul's data set. And you can see now it shows 19. So here's an example of one that wasn't being shown before. And you can tell because it has Noah says reject. And then the next two says Noah says accept. So the reason this is so interesting and cool to me is because if I had more than one reviewer in here, I could tell them, hey, just filter it down, go through the ones that are labeled Paul, and then it's really easy to find and compare how we rated all of these things, how I rated them and how they rated them. We'll be able to get both of them really, really easily. So when I heard about this feature, it was something I really wanted to share with you guys because honestly, it's just great. Like I, I didn't know this existed and it gives me an ability to filter the data that I had always wanted before, but I didn't really have. The way I was doing randomization before was kind of tedious. And as you saw, this took like three seconds to actually get done. And then it's very, very easy to go through and actually filter these. All you got to do is scroll down to where it says sample data and then it's there. So anyway, I just wanted to show this to you guys because it was really cool, really effective. I think on the free account, you can only actually create one sample. I think you have to have a paid account to get more than one sample with the same data set. In, in studies in my field, we're frequently 
where I would use this is for full text screening, for having more than one person do the full text screening. So that's where I would typically use it. Uh, if you do need to create more than one sample, do more than one sample, you just need to have one of the paid accounts on here. But hey, for a free account, I think this is pretty awesome that it enables us to do this. So that said, this was just a quick tip on how to create samples. It'll help you with your iterator reliability calculations and getting papers to different people and being able to really quickly go in and find them without a whole bunch of you know, annoyance, like I've always dealt with in the past with these things. So that said, I'm going to end the video here. If this has been a helpful tip for you, please hit that like and subscribe button. I will see you guys in the next video. If you have more questions about Rayanne, please feel free to drop them down in the comments. And thank you guys a bunch. Have an absolutely wonderful weekend.